He's got to play catching up to that drum by ear as opposed to setting the tempo himself when he's the only drummer. So the hardest thing for a drummer to do is play while a record, another drummer is playing and keep up with him. So for you to do that out today, that was not easy. That was not easy. Amen. He had to keep up with that drummer. Well, saints, this morning, I'm here to pastor you. <laughs> I'm going on vacation, <laughs> but I'm going to leave you pastoring. <laughs> so take that with you. I, I know, yeah, I know y'all love me, and you'll get it over by the time I get back here in September. But I might, today, I might have to cut you. <laughs> hey, what was, what was that in uh, Star Harlem Lights? Harlem, yeah. Harlem Lights? Yeah, now I got the cut. Now I got the cut. So, Eddie Murphy, now I got the cut. <laughs> now I got the cut. <laughs> that was funny, man. You didn't have to shoot me in my pinky toe. <laughs> but anyway, I love you all. And I have a message for you that's going to be challenging today. Amen. And I think it's appropriate. Um, how many know that I don't make calls during this pandemic thing that's going on? How many know that I don't make calls asking you where you have been? That's a sad right? So, so when you haven't heard from me, don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. If you were, you know, coming now and then, you would know that that's my policy, right? right under these, under these circumstances. Now, if I hear that you need me. I'm going to call. But if you're just not showing up, you need to call me. I'm where I'm supposed to be on Sunday. Am I right about it? That's right. My phone number is published. Thrice. <laughs> so you can get in touch with me if you want to. But. So, so in lieu of that, today's sermon I think is going to have something to, I believe today's word is going to speak toward that, all right? But now, you know I love you. You know I don't beat you up about not showing and this, that, and the other, not doing that. Those are the old days, and, you know, times were different. People weren't as fragile as they are today, and as sensitive, and I get that. So I've respected you enough not to be calling you up, talking about where you live. All right? So. Uh, today, if you have your Bibles, can you meet me in the book of Luke, chapter 14? The book of Luke, chapter 14. Uh, today, we will be using the New International Version. Yes. Luke, chapter 14, starting with verse 12 down to verse 24. Luke 14, 12 through 24. Luke 14, 12 through 24. When you get there, say, what you waiting for, preacher? <laughs> I'm waiting on the people who didn't say what you waiting on. <laughs> what you waiting on, preacher? I'm waiting on Clark. Clark, you said 14. Luke 14, 12 through 24. We waiting on Clark, y'all. Amen. That's it. That's it. We won't last. Okay. Are we all ready? Yep. All right, we had Luke 14, 12 through 24, and I did. With me? All right, here we go. She says she listen. I want to know if you read. I want to know listen. I want to read. So here we go. Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers, or relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Am I biblical so far? Although they cannot repay you, you will be 
be repaid, you will be repaid, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. We don't preach it. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the man who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus, verse 16, replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field, and I must go see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and I am on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still, another said, I just got married, and I want to try it, um, so I can't come. Y'all the servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. In my angry voice. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and the country lanes and make them come in so that my house will be filled. Verse 24. I tell you, not one of those men who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Let us look to the Lord in the word of prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Lord God, humbly asking you to bless this feeble presentation. I pray, Lord God, that you would touch the hearts of your people, that they will open up your heart, their hearts to receive the word that you've given me to give them. I pray, Lord God, that you would humble me as I deal with your most precious word, that no flesh would glory in your presence. No one would try to get honored that belongs to you. Now, Lord, we thank you in advance for what you want to do. We love you for how you loved us. We know we don't deserve your love, but you've given it to us, and we thank you. We pray that we would be catalysts of your love, that we would take the love that you've given us, and we would disperse it to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning, actually afternoon, I would like to use as a theme how to respond to an invitation. How to respond to an invitation. There are times when we are invited to a particular place and we do not realize how important it is to the inviter that we, the invitee, show up. Shows up. Shows up. In some cultures, especially the Hindu culture, I want you to know I've studied a little bit here, especially in the Hindu culture, it borders on unforgivable when a person does not show up to an invitation. This custom still prevails till this day in Palestine. I love the way it might sound like don't touch it. Walk away, sis, walk away. <laughs> there are some people in this room, I says, I says, right now, who if they invite you over to their house for an event and you turn them down, you will never be invited again. Got folk right now will never be invited back to your house again because you invited them and they didn't show. Sister, Sister Goodman over there, she 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 got a couple people she's thinking about right now. She got a couple, <laughs> that's right. That going Sheila, she's never coming back to my house. 
got names. She got names. She got names. She got names. Ash, Ash, I bet she got, I bet she got at least two things. I know she do, but her nod was just for that. Her nod. She had one of all body, full body now. <laughs> There are people that if you do not show up to an invitation, their feelings are hurt or they feel as though it is a slap in the face. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I know this seems kind of rough, but God had a reason for feeling the same way about certain types of invitations. Uh -huh. There's some invitations that, you know, I got news for you. There's some invitations that, watch this, it goes both ways. There's some invitations that the person will get upset if you turn them down. Uh -huh. But there's also some invitations that you get upset if you have not been invited. Oh, okay. That's true. Talking right. Talking you know right. I'm right. You know I'm right. You You've heard right. about certain events that folk were invited that you thought you deserved to be invited more than that folk. Uh -huh. And you were not invited, and you know that that bothered you. Yeah, Come on, you might as well say amen. amen. I ain't going to lie, it happened to me. One of my, one of my friends happened to me. And then we ain't been practicing. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But you know me, I told him about it. I went straight to him. I'm not, I'm not, you ain't going to hear it this way, bro. I'm like Domino's Pizza. If I got beef, I'm coming straight to the door. I'm going straight to the door. Hey, this is how I'm feeling about that thing. You that thing? Yeah, yeah, that board is on unforgivable. Okay. And you invited. <laughs> they were there? Right. I was? Okay. Aside from the fact you saved me some money, because it was one of them bringing it. I might as well tell you it was a wedding. And, you know. I'm like, what? That person get, yeah, let, let, me, let me move on, because I can get stuck here. <laughs> That's okay, Doug. Now, 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 you do remember the ten bridesmaids? There was ten bridesmaids. Well, five of them, watch this, did not get a second chance to the invitation. There were five who were wise, five who were foolish. Five who went out, took oil, took extra oil. Their lamps burned. The other lamps went out. When they went to get oil, the bride man came, the five who bought oil went in, and when they came to the church to get in, the, the, the door was closed, the five bridesmaids couldn't get in. Watch this, because they didn't respect the invitation. See, if you respect the invitation, you say, listen, I'm not going to let anything come between me and making this, this thing, so I'm going to take some extra oil. And when they didn't, then the, the master of the wedding said, look at it, man, y'all can't get it. There's something now. God put this parable in here because what He wants us to know that there are certain invitations that you don't turn down. Okay. Okay. With me, at y'all in? We got a little wrinkle here, but you all right? Okay, I can see it. I'm a wrinkle believer. <laughs> <laughs> Which proves you do not know when or if you will get another chance for an important invitation. Yes, yes. Am I right about it? Are you talking right? Yes, it's people sitting in here, man, and they don't invite you to their house in the first place. Uh-huh. Some people just cry like that. They're not mean. They just cry. And when they do extend their invitation to you, Maya, and ain't nobody been to their house in 10 years, because <laughs> they just cry. And you don't show up. When the next 10 years come along, you won't make the list. <laughs> My goal today is very simple, and that is to make or help you to understand how to respond to certain invitations. In this passage of scripture, I see the elucidation. Let me go your forehead a little bit, because some of y'all don't know what that word is. Come on, come on. Watch this. You don't know that's okay. That's okay. I got you. Okay, I'll say, elucidation is, is like illumination, clarification, uh, instruction, explanation. All right? Explanation. So we see the elucidation, we see the incitement, we see en enticement, we see the excuses, 
we see the evangelism and we see the exclusion. Don't get scared. I'm going to run right through this. I'll tell you again. Elucidation, enticement, excuses, evangelism, exclusion. Stay with me. Elucidation, verse 12. Then Jesus said to the host, when you give a lunch and a dinner, do not invite your friend. Now, let me help you out. That's why you need a preacher. The Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? Because what God is really saying here is, do not, he's not saying, do not invite your friends. He's really saying, do not only, only invite, invite your, your friends. friends. Right. See, so if you have another translation, it might have that broken mm -hmm. down. I don't know. But do not invite your friends only. Mm -hmm. Stay with me. Don't only invite your brothers. Don't only invite your relatives. Don't only invite your neighbors. If you do, they will invite you back and you will have been repaid. That's tit for tat. You want to get blessed, invite somebody who can invite you. But when you give a banquet, a banquet, verse 13, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Watch this. This is elucidation. I'm explaining it to you, right? Right? Illumination. Watch this. And you will be blessed. Verse 14. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Let me teach you something today. If you look to get paid down here for everything you do, guess what? You're not going to do much. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you really want to do much. You, you want to you store up treasures in heaven. Don't store up your treasures in earth where moths and rust decay. Store up your treasures in heaven where moths and the canker worm and all those things can't eat up your blessings. See, when you give a homeless person a $5 bill, you just gave something to heaven. You give me a $5 bill, trust me, when you get broke, my phone going to ring. <laughs> and you going to be calling in a marker. <laughs> Remember that $5 I gave you back in 1978 in Woody's Bar? You were drinking Johnny Walker Black, and I was drinking Tangeray. Well, I need that $5. They call it in. They call it in. Yep. So you want to give it to somebody who will never be able to repay you. That's when you get blessed. I'm not saying don't help people that you know, but I'm saying you really want to get blessed. Help somebody that has no chance of helping you back. Amen. Not only we talk about the elucidation, but let's take about the enticement. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a banquet and invited many guests. Now, here's what you got to understand, Charlie. These guests were invited right now. They were pre-invited. They were pre-invited. So here's what happened. They said, look, next Friday at 5 o'clock in the evening, I'm going to have a banquet at my house. You're invited. You're invited many guests. Stay with me now. My says, at the time of the banquet, verse 17, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited. You see it? Come, for everything is now ready. Now, I need you to understand that this parable here is talking about the Jews. Mm -hmm. Boy, the Jews were the original invitees to the banquet. The Jews were the original invitees to the banquet. Okay. Picture this thing. The master of the banquet is represents God. Oh, I'm preaching now. Y'all ain't y'all ain't listening. I'm preaching. Now. But I said, the master of the banquet represents our master. And that master invited the Jews to the banquet. The banquet being heaven. The banquet is heaven. Turn to your neighbor and say the banquet is heaven. The banquet is in heaven. And not only did he invite them, but then he sends out the second invitation which says, okay, it's Friday night at 5 o'clock and the banquet is on and popping. Come. Now keep in mind, you've already been invited. You already knew when I gave you the first invitation that it was Friday night. Now, I'm sending my servant out for those of you with the amnesia <laughs> to remind you 
the church is on Friday night at 5 o'clock. Are y'all with me here? The banquet is Friday night at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Not only do we see the enticement at the time of the banquet when he sent the servants out to tell those who had been invited, but let's take a look at the excuses in verse 18. Stay with me. Stay with me. We continue to allow excuses as to why we cannot come to the bank. Can I pass to you for a little while? Just let me pass you. I'm going on vacation. You got a whole month to forgive me. For pastor. You need a break. But they all began to make excuses. The first said, I bought a field and I must go and see it. Now, how trifling is that? Who buys a field that they didn't see on? Ah, hey, come on, man. Come on, man. You ain't buying no field that you ain't seen already. You want to receive. <laughs> Problem is, you put this receive over the banquet, not understanding how important that banquet is. And you know what we do? We receive stuff at banquet time. We do stuff that could have been done after the banquet. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Or before the banquet. Right. Right. And you know why people keep inviting you during banquet time? Because you keep showing up. How come nobody... How come Michael Graham never in 25 years ever invited me to do something at 11 o'clock on Sunday? Sister Green, how come you never, in 25 years you've known me, right? Why have you never, ever, ever invited me to do something at Sunday at 11 o'clock? Why? Because you know I'm going to say H to the no. You know why? Because I understand the importance of the banquet. And I need you, 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 to understand the importance of the banquet. Why? Because you might not get another invitation. And, wait, let me go with you. Oh, I got one for you. Here goes, Katie. Those who believe that you can lose your salvation, uh -huh. believe that when you are in sin, if you die while you are in sin, right. you don't go to heaven. Watch this. The scripture says to forsake not the fellowship of the brethren. Right? Yeah. Is that what the scripture said? Yeah. So if you forsake the fellowship of the brethren, you are what? In sin. Now, for those who believe you can lose your salvation, which I don't, I think that's a, I, they got scripture back there. They got scripture now. Don't, 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 don't play them. They ain't stupid. But I just don't disagree with their doctrine. And it's a good thing I do. Because I wouldn't be saved right now. every other day. I sin. I'm, I'm not saved. I stop sinning. I'm saved again. I make a mistake. I'm not saved. I, I stopped making that mistake. I'm saved again. But just for the sake of argument, based on this case right here, God said I ain't never calling back again. Oh, Y'all missed that. Man. Excuses. Excuses. He, he bought a field, and now he got to go see. If I was God, you better be glad I ain't. I'm glad I ain't God. Because I'd be young as still. You wouldn't, you wouldn't own another piece of grass. You wouldn't own a blade. I invite you to the main bank. These are the Jews. And you come up with a trifling excuse like you got to go test the field. And it gets more trifling. Verse 19. 
Another one said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. It gets worse and worse. You got, you got five oxen? Did you buy five oxen that you didn't try? That's like telling me you bought a Cadillac and didn't test drive. Even if, even if mine is on the way, even if you, you, know, you got to order yours brand new and it's coming from the factory in Detroit, they made it yet. But at least I'm going to test drive the sample. I got an idea how this thing going to handle or if it fits my needs before I purchase it. This boy bought five yoke of oxen and he has to try it out, can I say it? On Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Did I miss that? Up. Did I get you yet? Did I get you yet? Did I, did I strike anybody? Did I hit anybody yet? I hope nobody escapes from this here. Five yoke oxen, and you got to try it out on banquet day. On banquet day. Now, they give you an example. You know how we do the five year pastor thing, five year banquet? Now, watch this. Now, here, here, here. this is a perfect example. Five-year pastor's day. We missed it this time because of the pandemic. So I guess I'll catch y'all on the 50th year. Yeah. But uh, we missed the 25. <laughs> we probably catch up on the 40th or 50th or something like that. Anyway, that's okay. That's okay. I'm, not, I'm not bitter. <laughs> you know, 27, 28, 29. But I'm not bitter. But my sister. And you tell me that you couldn't come because you just bought a new car and you got to go test it out. On your banquet. On my banquet night. Very important day to me. You follow what I'm saying? Guess what? Guess who's not invited to the 50th? Guess who I'm not going to ask to come to the 30th? Or the 35th? Or the 40th? Or I'm dead? You understand what I'm saying? I'm just trying to make this thing live so you understand what I'm saying. It's like, Clark, you decided to redo your 20th vows. You know, you did the 10th, then you didn't redo it. Well, let's say on the 20th. When's your 20th? Coming up a few years? Last year, you did 20 already? Oh, my goodness. And, 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 and he puts together this big shindig, and he invites you, and you tell him, I just bought a new car. Then you came, I just bought a new pickup truck. Ford F-150, brand new, one more on the side, total cover my Sunday. And I can't come because I gotta go trust it out. That's trifling. Turn your name and say that's trifling. Still another said, now, now, now this one would sound a little more sacred, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this plain too. He said, I just got married, so I can't come. And this one didn't even say, please excuse me. He just said, I just got married. And I can't now, let me help you out with this just got married. You know, betrothals in those days, that's when you engage. They last years, long time. And the wedding event itself, that's a seven-day thing. The wedding itself took seven days. There was all kinds of ceremonies leading up to it. So I would imagine if it took a whole year of betrothaling, and seven days to actually get married, I would imagine that they probably still thought, watch this, Poppy, uh, Pop, Pop. I, I, I would imagine that they still thought they had just got married a year later. If it takes so long to do everything else, he probably feel like I just got married last June, June before last. And even if it was recently, why can't you step away for a minute or bring the bride to the banquet? You know why? Because he wasn't trying to find a way to the banquet. I want you to think of somebody who, in your life, that if they got married, there's no way in God's earth you would miss that way. Okay? We all got somebody. That there's no way I would miss that. No way. Just not going to miss it. Well, God wants us to have that attitude toward 
the things of God. Which is why he used this parable to say, those who made excuses will never taste my banquet. Now keep in mind, he's talking to the Jews. It's a Jewish thing. Not only Jews, but other non-believers. Another thing I did, I looked up. I said, guess what I was going to do, Mark? You want to know this. I was going to, I was going to say he, he did it to the Jews. Then I was going to say the Hindus. Then I was going to say the Muslims and the Jehovah Witnesses. right? And I said, I wonder how many religions there are. So I did a little research. And do you know... I spat at over a thousand different religions. I stopped. I would be standing here today for another hour retelling you how many different religions there are. Different religions. Google religions. And Google, they got them in alphabetical order according to country. America. Australia. You know what I mean? At, you know, different, and you will find there are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of religions. Not people, religions. And none of those people who rejected them are going to taste the banquet of heaven. Some invitations you can't be turning down. Yes, yes. Some invitations. So I got another example. You know you have been to places and you didn't really feel like going. But you knew that there would be an issue if you didn't show up. <laughs> you know you, I've been to plenty of places that I ain't feel like being. But I knew this person was counting on me. They wanted me to, you know what I mean? You, you see what I'm saying? You thought I'm not showed up for things for a lot of you right here. I ain't feel like doing that. I was resting. I was getting ready for you. I was rusting from you to get ready for you, and then you called me to do something with you. And I'm trying to be away from you before I hurt you. That's why I'm going on vacation. Ain't no right though, I'm just being real. Y'all like it when I'm real. I'm just trying to be real that, that you know. But you gotta show up. You gotta show up. Amen. Amen. When the right invitation, you gotta know the difference between an invitation that you can turn down and an invitation you can just blow off. And I'm helping you to understand the difference. It, it, I'm helping you if you if you if you stop blowing off one more invitation a year. If you show up to church one more Sunday a year as a result of this message here, I'm going to glory thanking God for the opportunity to preach and pastor you. Y'all with me here? Because I just believe that God wants us to hear. Now, they started making excuses. It's going to be a little bit long. Let's take a look at the evangelism. We talked about the excuses. Let's take a look at the evangelism. The servant came back. Now you can tell this, this is where the evangelism starts. The servant came back and reported this to the master. Reported what? All the excuses that he heard. Watch well, this. Then the owner of the house became angry. Turn to your neighbor and say, he became angry. He became angry. He got mad. He got, mad. He got upset. He got you with me here? Am I making sense? And ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets. And the alleys of the town and bring the poor and the crippled and the blind and the lame. A few hours later, the servant comes back in verse 22 and he says, Sir, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Do you see heaven? Do you see heaven? We went out, we door to door, we knocked on the door, we compelled them to come. They came, some came, some didn't, and there's still room. There's always still room in heaven. You see the room? You see the illustration? You see the, you see the heaven in this game? There is still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and country lanes. Now he go on the skid row. When he say roads and country lanes, 
It's a totally different thing than what he had told them earlier about going out into the streets and the alleys. When he started talking about the country lane, he going, he going deep. Going into, go on into the hood, go down Skid Row, knock on some, some cardboard boxes. Tell the people under the cardboard boxes to get up and come to my house. I'm, I'm inviting them to the bank. Let me tell you, let me tell you how, let me tell you how these, these people, let me tell you how these, these people identify with us. They are the Gentiles, the non-Jews. Picture, the Jews were invited, they turned it down. God, the master, got mad and said, okay, you Jews, you don't have to come. Matter of fact, I'm going out and get me some Gentiles. I'm going out and convert me some Muslims. I'm going out and convince some Hindus. I'm going out and get some atheists. I'm going out and get the worst people on the planet, and I'm going to compel them to come to my house. That is exactly an illustration of evangelism. God gave the Jews first. They turned it down. They rejected Jesus. They didn't want to come to the banquet. And God said, look, I ain't running out of people. I'll run out of Jews before I run out of people. I got some people. Plenty of people want to come to my house. Yeah. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. He says, go to the roads of the country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house may be filled. Not only do we see the evangelism, but let's take a look at the exclusion. He says, I tell you, not one of those men, that's Jews and other believers, who were invited will get a taste of my bank. God has invited many people to come to him. I started that list about religion, and I found out not just the usual su suspects, the Jews and the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Muslims, but thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of religions will not taste the banquet of the Lord. Mm. Are you with me so far? So, look, you didn't, you didn't understand how privileged you are to have been invited to the banquet. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I thank God that you did accept the invitation. Yes, yes. And I thank God that you cannot lose your salvation. Yes, yes. Are you with me here? But there's some other invitations going on. Uh, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, there's some other invitations. You know, there's, 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 there's um, Sunday morning service, Bible study, men, women, and youth class. Invitation. Invitation. They go out and we continue on a regular basis, turn them down. And close them and get out your way. There are some biblical excuses some might use. Adam couldn't come because he had to listen to his wife. Abraham couldn't come because he couldn't tell the truth about who his wife was. Moses couldn't come because he had to put an Egyptian on ice. Elijah couldn't come because he had to catch a, cat, a chariot. David couldn't come because he saw a woman that he just had to have. <laughs> Noah couldn't come because he liked to get high on his own supply. He was part of the bubble. <laughs> Jonah couldn't come because he was a racist and he only liked a certain class of people. John couldn't come because he lost his head over an exotic dancer. Peter couldn't come because he had anger issues and had to go to anger management class. Paul couldn't come because he was too late. Too late. I want to say that God has to replace someone every single week. Because every single week, another saint decides that they have to go try their oxen. Every single week, a saint can't come because he just got married. Every single week, a saint has to go and look at the land that they already purchased. Every Sunday, that we come up with excuses as to why we can't come to the bank. And don't let one of us get a new boyfriend. Come on, Pastor. 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 Come on, Past
<laughs> Don't let us get a new girlfriend. Oh, oh, here's my favorite. Or a new car. Uh -uh. And God forbid a new house. You might quit God after a new house. <laughs> or a new job. <laughs> or take on a class. And if it's a biblical class, you might not have a coming church. <laughs> I'm taking a biblical class, but I need church in. Right. 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 Just remember, what God did to the Israelites, yeah. he still does to us. Yeah. He replaces us with those who will come in. So ask yourself, what excuse Sunday after Sunday as to why I cannot come to the banquet that God has prepared for me? What is my excuse as to why I cannot come to the banquet that God has prepared for me? So I say to you, how do you respond to an invitation? Just show up. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Mike and Buck, y'all want to come up here? This is really a really important part of the service where we want to ask that